हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल अनफॉक विद डॉक्टर अतहर परवीन दिस लेक्चर विल बी द सेकंड पार्ट ऑफ द चैप्टर इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक रेडिएशन इन आवर फर्स्ट लेक्चर वी डिस्कस्ड ऑल अबाउट इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक रेडिएशंस देयर एग्जांपल्स प्रॉपर्टीज यूजेस एंड व्हाट आर द डिफरेंट इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक रेडिएशंस एंड आल्सो वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक स्पेक्ट्रम in this lecture we will discuss about properties of photons followed by photoelectric effect we will also uh, see some important terms related to photoelectric effect okay if you have not watched the first lecture please go and watch the first lecture i will give you the link in the description in the first lecture we were talking about photons we gave little bit introduction about photon then we moved on to electromagnetic radiation now in this lecture we will again start the discussion with the photon itself in that lecture we told that photon is a bundle of energy or a packet of energy or in simple words we told that photon is a single wave we can relate to photon as a single wave we told there now we also told that the energy of a photon e is equals to h nu we are talking about the wave nature of light remember when we are telling about photon we are talking about the wave nature of light when we are telling that the energy of photon is equals to h nu that means we are talking about the wave of light nu is the frequency right that frequency will be there only for a wave not for a particle so we told that e is equals to h nu in the previous lecture we also told that nu is equal to 1 upon lambda or nu the frequency is inversely proportional to the wavelength of a wave here if i remove the proportionality constant i can introduce this term c which is the speed of light of electromagnetic wave okay let me repeat it for you all in e is equals to h nu e is the energy of the photon h is the planck's constant we also told about the value of the planck's constant in the previous video that is very important and the nu is the frequency of radiation or the frequency of the photon and this frequency is inversely proportional to the wavelength of the photon if i remove this uh, proportionality symbol then i can include this constant speed of light c this will be equal to 3 into 10 raised to 8 meters per second okay so i hope you got it just remember e is equals to h nu and this in turn is equals to hc upon lambda now let's talk more about photons what are the properties of photons because unless and until we know the properties of photons we cannot relate to what we call as photoelectric effect now photons travel at speed of light which is c and this speed will be there even in vacuum okay this speed is equal to 3 into 10 raised to 8 meters per second as we are telling it openly next property of photon is very interesting it is that the photon has zero rest mass zero rest mass means if it is at rest then it is not having any mass if the photon is at rest then it is not having any mass that means photon cannot exist at rest it can exist only if it is moving obviously photon is light right if it is moving only you can know that there is light or else it is not existing at all okay so photon has zero rest mass third property of a photon the kinetic mass of a photon m is equal to e upon c square or h upon c lambda for this i will have to explain you a bit let us go back to our class again we told there e is equal to h nu right that was for a wave nature of light now what will be the equation of the energy for particle nature of light it will be the well known e is equal to mc square okay so e is equals to mc square will give you the energy of the light when it is behaving as a particle and when it is behaving as a wave we told it right e is equal to h nu now if i relate the right hand side mc square and h nu for energy then i can relate this m and the frequency the mass and the frequency of the wave okay and also we told that e is equals to hc upon lambda right because nu is inversely proportional to lambda that is the frequency of the wave is inversely proportional to the wavelength then we introduce this term speed of light that is c now i can equate mc square and hc upon lambda right mc square will be equal to hc upon lambda 
Now I can say that m is equals to h upon c lambda because there is c square in the numerator. Here c c in the numerator. Then if I divide, then one c will get cancelled and it will be in the denominator. So I can say that m will be equal to h upon c lambda. So this is your kinetic mass of a photon. Either you say e is equal to m c square or m is equals to e upon c square. Or you say m is equals to h upon c lambda. Now this h upon lambda is there. No, if I remove this constant, there is one term h upon lambda right in the right hand side. This h upon lambda is nothing but the momentum of the photon. This is also relating to the particle nature of the light. If you see uh, about dual nature, the de Broglie wavelength that comes into picture here. The momentum of this photon will be equal to h upon lambda, where lambda will be the de Broglie wavelength. If you have attended my GPSTR classes, the dual nature part, then you will be knowing. But still, I will give you the link in the description. You can go and watch there. This is a very very interesting topic actually. This is known as modern physics, the quantum mechanics. It really gives goosebumps when I uh, read this part of uh, physics every time. Because this is really very interesting. No one can imagine that light is behaving as a wave and also as a particle. Think how great those people should be. De Broglie, Einstein and uh, Planck. I really don't understand what type of minds they should be having. Really great. Okay. So coming back. The fourth property of the photon is that the momentum of the photon is equals to h upon lambda. Or I can also say that it is equal to e upon c because e is equals to h c upon lambda, right? So here, if you remember these four equations in the right hand side, e is equals to m c square, e is equals to h nu, e is equals to h c upon lambda, and p is equals to h upon lambda. If you remember these four equations, no, then you can say entire properties of photons. You can purely describe the properties of photons based on these four equations only. Okay. Next, fifth property of the photon is that the photons travel in a straight line. Obviously, we are studying from school, right? Light has a rectilinear propagation. It moves in a straight line. We know it. Next, point six is that energy of a photon, it depends upon frequency of the photon. So, the energy of the photon does not change when photon travels from one medium to another. Because E is equals to H nu, right? E is equals to H nu. Energy is depending only on the frequency. Unless and until there is no change in frequency, there is no change in energy. So, whatever the medium is there, no problem at all. Energy will be same. Next point is that wavelength of the photon changes in different media. So, velocity of a photon is different in different media. We know it, right? Frequency is inversely proportional to wavelength. And this wavelength is related to the speed of the photon also. V is equals to F lambda, right? We told. Now that uh, lambda, if it is changing means it there is some change in the medium, then only it is changing. Then if it is changing means the velocity of the photon will also change. So the moral of the story is that if the medium is changing, if the photon is traveling in different medium, its energy will not change, but its velocity will change. Okay, that is because of wavelength. Next is that photons are electrically neutral. Obviously, they are neutral. That's the reason they will not bend also. They will not deviate among magnetic and electric fields. And also photons, they may show diffraction under given conditions. Not only diffraction, they may show interference also. But you have to have some given conditions. Under particular conditions, they will show you all the optical properties. Okay. So, these were the properties of photons. Any of the question may be asked in any twisted way. That's why I'm giving you. This is very important. Unless and until we understand the properties of photons, we cannot understand the photoelectric effect. Now, let's talk about photoelectric effect. Imagine that there is some metal block and uh, you are putting light on it. A ray, ray of light or the many of the photons, they are getting incident on it. Then you have to imagine what will happen. You may feel that light is falling, nothing will happen. But that is wrong. That is not going to happen. If light falls on a metal, then electrons will be ejected from that metal surface. Those electrons, they gain energy from this light. From now onwards, every time I will address light as photon. Okay. That photon's energy is absorbed by the electrons on the surface of the metal. 
and with that energy those electrons come out of the metal block this is known as photoelectric effect but this will not happen all the time this will happen at, under particular conditions these electrons they will need some minimum energy that energy they are gaining from the photon okay this minimum energy if they have then only those electrons will escape from the metal surface and this energy is known as work function the symbol is phi not and this work function it will have a unit ev electron volt when i say that this work function is the minimum energy required for an electron to escape from the metal surface i mean to say that only those photons with energy greater than work function phi not will result in emission of electrons if the photon will have energy less than the work function phi not then the emission of electrons is not possible okay because those electrons they are gaining energy from photons and they are getting ejected from the metal block right now this electron volt you know this is the energy gained by an electron when accelerated by a potential difference that means if you are uh, connecting some battery or something like that then you can relate it to potential difference and usually this electron volt this can be converted into joule also because it is energy right so this one electron volt is equal to 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 joule this is the important value you have to remember every time you want to convert electron volt into joule you have to use this value 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 joule okay now let's go deeper into photoelectric effect as I told you, it is the phenomenon of emission of electrons from mainly metal surfaces which are exposed to light energy. This light energy, it could be X-rays, gamma rays, UV rays, visible light and even infrared rays. We are talking about the electromagnetic radiations now, isn't it? But the only condition is that this light should be of suitable frequency. For a particular frequency only, photoelectric effect occurs. And the electrons which are emitted by this photoelectric effect they are called as photoelectrons and the, these electrons when they are emitting means they are constituting some current right so these current formed by the photoelectrons is known as photoelectric current now this photoelectric current is the hero of this photoelectric effect all the applications of photoelectric effect are all based on this photoelectric current because this is the speciality of photoelectric effect the emitted electrons they are forming the photoelectric current okay now one important note is that not only metals even non-metals can show photoelectric effect even liquids and gases they also can show photoelectric effect but to a limited extent if you want some dominating photoelectric effect then only the metals are the right materials and one particular frequency light also should be incident on it then only photoelectrons will be ejected for example if you have this uv light which is incident on the metals then you can see photoelectrons but if you have uh, metals other than alkali metals then uh, you will not have photoelectrons when you incident a visible light on it but then again if you have some particular visible light which is focused on only alkali metals then again you can have photoelectrons ejected now you may be thinking that what is this ma'am is confusing us. So this is I am giving you intro. I will talk more and more on it uh, in uh, coming classes of uh, this chapter. So here now I am just giving you introduction and giving you a gist about uh, what is actually a photoelectric effect and uh, what are the situations where photoelectrons are uh, emitted. Okay. If you watch all the coming classes by the completion of this chapter, you will be very happy to understand everything about the photoelectric effect, which is a very interesting phenomena. Okay. Now this photoelectric effect, you know, basically this was studied by Hertz. Actually before Hertz also people were there, Hal Vox and Leonard. Okay. Before 1887 also this Hal Vox and Leonard, they observed photoelectric effect. But main work of this photoelectric effect, the observations and the experiments, this all was done by the well-known Hertz in 1887. Now, before starting the discussion on the experimental studies of photoelectric effect, I want to have a talk with you all regarding some photons. What all may photons do? So, 
to know more about photons relating to what all the photons can do and what are the observations of photoelectric effect and what are the applications related to photoelectric effect and what are the experimental facts related to photoelectric effect you should subscribe to my channel and also like this video and share among other aspirants and you will get the next class very soon in my YouTube channel Unfog with Dr. Atahar Parveen. Okay. Thank you. All the best. Bye.